Hey folks, so I want to try something new tonight. I'm going to do a little bit of a how-to with fly cutters. So what's got me wanting to do this is I've been cranking out some parts. Um, you've seen the video with the skateboard uh, motor bracket and I made it and I left it um, with like the milled finish or the extruded finish I guess you would call it um, coming straight out of um, off the machine you know and so this would look so much nicer if I had my nice fly cutter going and I could make this a nice shiny surface so what's kept me from doing it though is when you buy a fly cutter you get the little tool to hold it a little I guess the holding tool and then you get just a piece of um, like tool stock like so this is just tool steel just a square stock piece and then you got to grind it yourself and so it sounds easy you know just go grind it but then you get into okay well what angles do I need and then if you go on the forums just thinking it's going to be a simple answer you get into all this different vocabulary rake angle relief angle side angle this and that and it, like my head like exploded <laughs> So I'm like, if I'm having this much trouble, either one of two things, either my Google's broken or it's just not out there. So I looked in my machinery handbook. Anybody who's anybody has one of those, right? Um, and I'm used to this thing having, you know, a million tables. Like I just flipped random pages and it's, you know, all these exact things that, you know, if you're doing this operation with this type of tool and this type of base material, you're going to run these speeds and these speeds and all this stuff. And there's so much information in here that half the time I can't even figure out what I'm looking at. But then I get into um, single point cutters and they kind of, they give you a decent picture to go off of to at least explain some of the vocabulary that folks are talking about online. So you kind of got like your rake angle, like this would be the cutting point. Um, side relief would be, I guess, if you picture cutting with the side of the tool, because I look at it like that's a bottom relief, but it's you're cutting with the side of the tool, so the relief would be underneath it. Um, an end relief. So it kind of makes sense. But then you get into, like, I'm looking for tables here to say, okay, if you're cutting with this steel, or with like high-speed steel cutter and aluminum, you should cut these angles and there's really not much in there so they've got all their different vocabulary here of all the different types of angles and all that and then when you dig in there you start to see like relief angles they do tell you buried in the text you know this type of material six to eight degrees this one five to seven this one eight to twelve this one five to ten so for what I'm doing I'm doing high-speed steel cutting aluminum so it says, yeah, 12 to 16 degrees. This is the um, relief angles for the end and the side. So basically it's going to be relief angle. So it's going to be the undercut on the bottom of the tool so that the bottom of the tool doesn't rub the surface as well as the side because when you're cutting in here and you're feeding, when you're feeding the material in sideways, it's got to be able to cut the the side of the material as well so it's cutting the side and the bottom so those are your two from what I can tell the critical angles um, from there they've also got the rake angle so I think of that as like a snow plow you know all your snows piling up they've got um, an angle on that plow and so that would be a positive rake angle um, it actually it talks about rake angles and it basically says that you know the sharper the rake or the the more positive the rake angle, so the more sloped it is, like a snow plow, the less horsepower it takes, the sharper the cutting edge is, but the more it's going to dull quickly. Um, if you're cutting a really hard material, you might chip the, the tip of it. And so there's actually times that it talks about in here that they run a negative angle, so, so basically your snow plow would be tipped the wrong way, if that makes sense. So, um, but they don't give any numbers. It's crazy. They were talking five plus five minus five but they don't relate that to anything so I did find this guy um, Tom's techniques.com and he just had like a basic um, basic setup here and he says uh, material aluminum brass steel tool steel stainless all that and it kind of gives you a side relief and end relief and a rake 
And for the most part, he's about in there because what did I say mine was going to be? 12 to 16 degrees would be my reliefs. He's got 12 and 8. So, you know, if we go with 12 on both of them, we might be okay. And then he says side rake, 15 degrees. So I'll probably go 12 degrees for my reliefs and then a side rake of 15 and go ahead and um, see how this looks on just a piece of scrap aluminum. Oh, but first, I do want to do this. I've heard not to get too far into the weeds with this, which I guess I kind of already have. I'm freaking out about angles. Because people have said you can just throw a piece of tool steel in there and run it and it'll come out half decent. So I want to see if it's actually true. So I'm going to run it just like that and just, just see what it does. I'm thinking it probably will do okay. Like the bottom's going to scuff a little bit, but, but we'll see what it looks like. And then we will go ahead and I got my grinder set up here. So we'll go ahead and grind some angles in here. Uh, I'm not sure how accurate I'm going to get. I've got a little angle finder, but we'll try and get as close as we can and run it again. Try and get some, uh, some decent finishes. I will say I purchased um, into some of the Tormach tooling system, so TTS they call it. So pretty simple system. All they got is like a it's an R8 collet, ground flat on the top, um, and then they've got a bunch of tool holders with a recessed edge that that fits against. So the idea is that when this goes into your R8 um, spindle, um, like on a normal collet, it's gonna seal up against this um, tapered edge but it's going to seal a little bit higher a little bit lower every time it's not repeatable um, with especially with cnc your tool table is worthless so with this this can move up and down as it needs to and it's going to squeeze on to this shaft but this guy is going to butt up against the top or the bottom of your spindle top of this bottom of the spindle and it's going to be repeatable so got to say um, first name brand thing I think I bought for this whole venture uh, and so far I'm super happy with it I finally got enough of these little guys because uh, I keep ordering them and then I forget about one tool that I need for a job and then it makes the whole idea of a tool table worthless because you got one part or one process that you still have to um, touch off every time and all that so I think I finally got it nailed down to where I've got enough of these that I can go ahead and uh, and basically just run it and um, use my tool table I guess I need to turn on the actual CNC controller here. I'm over here trying to move the machine. Just so excited tonight. I want to try this out. See, so that just goes in there. You run your draw bar down. And Man, I cleaned up too good. I can't find anything. Here we go. So I'm pretty much going to center my part. I'm just going to do this with jogs. And then bring it down. Actually, I need to touch off though. I'm actually going to touch off just so that I can do like a couple thou cut pass. Right about there. We'll touch off. Okay, so this is just the normal finish when you buy aluminum. Let's see what we can do here. Um, I guess I'm just going to play with speeds. I'll start out slow. I'm not even plugged in. Holy cow. What a rookie. Try that and see what happens. Turn the speed up the air. Started to actually get deep there. I'm going to pull out. Spindles at about 800. I'm running at about 1.7 inches a minute right now.
that's a pretty like way way better of a surface finish um and that's just off of a piece of freaking you know s square stock sitting in there so you can see scuffing in it and that's kind of to be expected this was just kind of just to be dumb and just throw a piece of stock in there just to see what you can get because i mean honestly if i get worse than that then that means i'm really messing up right because <laughs> if you can just put a piece of square junk in there and make that happen then then we should be able to do a lot better but just so it's on record i was running 800 rpm according to my little you know piece of crap there and then i was running 1.7 inch a minute but yeah let's go ahead and um take the bit out grind it try and get something close i think we're going to do 12 degrees and 15 degree rake so 12 degree reliefs on side and end and then a 15 degree rake let's do it all right so that was kind of ghetto yeah my grinder's not mounted so it wanted to walk everywhere so i need to mount that sucker but anyway this is what we ended up with so this is my cutting end um and it actually says to do a little bit of a, a curve there if it's sharp it um it'll just basically dull really quickly so this is my rake angle so this is where the chips are gonna hopefully come up and off um so this down here would be my relief angle to um, keep it from scuffing this is the bottom of the piece basically and then you've also got a relief angle this direction to keep it from when it's cutting into the side of something to, to keep it from scuffing the side so let's go ahead and put that in the machine and see how that does and by the way another thing to mention is I'm mounting it on my piece with a half inch um, radius so one inch diameter so it's the equivalent of a one inch tool in reality I'd like to run it out to like two inch radius uh, or one inch radius two inch diameter because the bigger the swoop the less or the bigger the swoop the bigger the diameter um, the, the less passes you have to do and the less machining marks Hmm. What happened? It actually looked better before I ground it. <laughs> Are you recording? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. To be honest, it's really not much better than what I started with, so. I don't know, that was only a thou. Let me try a thou again. I also sped up the um, um, the feed rate to two and a half inch per minute. That last pass was decent. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's probably about the same as the very first one, honestly. But yeah, this machine for sure does not like to do the fly cutting thing. Um, obviously, um, as far as balance and everything, it's not good that I've got this much metal hanging out here, so it probably wouldn't hurt to cut this in half. Especially because from what I can tell, that's you, I'm not going to be able to stick this way out here, you know, stick that out an inch or it's just going to vibrate like crazy. And so I'm probably better off, honestly, cutting that uh, just to, to balance the cutter a little bit better. I guess one more note is my setup here isn't very good either because I've got just this little width of metal. You know, and this is sticking up this high, so it's going to chatter by itself. And it's a thin piece, so it's this cutter has to come up on this edge every pass, and it's hitting that edge. Ooh, that's nasty. That's actually the worst one yet. I feel like I was going real slow though. Let's try it with this thing sped up a little bit.
That one's actually not bad. The surface is a little cloudy, but it's pretty darn smooth. Um, as far as like smooth to the touch and you know, not a bunch of scratches and stuff in it. Um, but it is cloudy. I wonder why that is. Um, that was at like about 800 RPM again. It looks like 800 RPM is about where I need to be with this guy. Um, I also noticed that I can push down on this thing. Look at all that play it gets. I never really noticed it until now. But I almost think the bit was just kind of digging in a little bit. I'm going to try and run it again. Now that i got a smooth surface, I'm going to give it exactly like two thou to take off and see what it does. So that's about, I don't know, halfway between 800 and 1700. Taking two thousandths off at one inch per minute feed. Definitely not shattering, that's nice and smooth actually. I am seeing little tiny lines though. That's got to be like run out in the spindle or, or flex in the column, something that's making it do that. Yeah. Alright, so I think I might have figured out a little bit. Um, so number one, sorry my camera died. Um, had to get a new battery and I was too lazy to go get the battery and then show you the awesome milling I just did. <sighs> That's how it always works though, when the camera's off is when the best stuff happens, right? So, first of all, I looked at my relief there on the bottom, and it looked good from a distance, but then when I noticed, or when I, when I looked closer, it, looked, it actually came pretty flat there, um, right at the tip. So really it was scuffing a little bit. So I went ahead and I reground it. Um, you can see that end's getting pretty small because by the time I got it, where I was happy that thing was like tiny. I didn't have any type of coolant whatsoever on there. It was dry. So I went ahead, I reground it. I uh, grabbed just the closest stuff. That's just like drilling and tapping fluid. I just put a couple drops of that on the surface. Um, I sped my spindle up even more. So about 1300 RPM. Um, I brought my jog speed. It's at two and a half minutes or two and a half inch per minute right now. And um, that higher RPM really took the chatter out of it. It was nice and smooth. Um, ran it one direction only, and this is what I ended up with. So, I mean, it's still not like a freaking like mirror finish, which would be nice. But honestly, like you could polish that, and it would be a mirror finish. That I'm pretty happy with that. Like if, if I was putting stuff out the door and all the sides looked like that, then I'd be pretty happy, you know? Like, I've been putting stuff out with this as my finish versus that. So I think I'm going to play with it a little bit more um, and start really working with it. But I don't plan on putting anything else out the door that's got just the crappy um, extruded finish on it. Hopefully this helped you a little bit, um, especially with all the lingo and everything. Um, basically the stuff you got to worry about is having a relief cut on the side and the the well the end in the side and having a good rake that's that's the key to get something to cut from what I can tell um, the smart people might get online and tell me I'm an idiot but that's okay tell me I'm an idiot and tell me what I did wrong and, and I'll edit the video and make it better yeah so that's that's about it for this week um, so I will see you next week